how do we swab when we go into a food production environment? Some general things to keep in mind before sampling include the following. The best time to collect samples is three to four hours after the start of production. In general, samples should not be taken immediately after the cleaning of equipment because residues of detergents and sanitizers will reduce the viability of any bacteria present. If samples must be taken during non-production times, several hours should have elapsed since cleaning and sanitizing. Sponges, sponge sticks, and swabs hydrated with DE neutralizing buffer are recommended for sampling. Dress warmly and wear clean clothes that you are not afraid to get dirty. Food facilities can often be cold, so ensure you are dressed warmly enough to sample comfortably in these spaces. Wash your hands before and after sampling. If you feel like your hands get too dirty throughout the environmental assessment, wash them again. When sampling, go from the least dirty to the most dirty sites. In general, drains should be sampled last. If the facility that you are investigating usually requires personnel to wear booties or hairnets, you should assess the situation and match what they normally use. Be sure to follow all sanitary standard operating procedures as required by the operation. We will show you the proper technique to sample with the most common swabbing tools, sponges, sponge sticks, and swabs. Note, be sure to select the proper sampling tool for your sampling site. First, we will cover the use of sponges. Sponges are useful for sampling larger surface areas. We prefer loose sponges over sponge sticks for areas like these where a sponge stick won't fit but a folded sponge will. Label the sample with a permanent marker for identification. Move the sponge to the end of the bag. Tear the bag open. Note, do not set opened bag down. Put on sterile gloves. Remember, do not touch the sponge or the inside of the bag with bare skin. Always use a gloved hand. Use a fresh sterile glove for each sponge. Push the sponge to extend it from the bag. Carefully remove the sponge. Aseptically swab across the entire sampling surface. Make sure to apply sufficient pressure. Be sure to use all sides of the sponge, including the narrow side. Turn the sponge over and sample the same site one last time, swabbing in a new direction. Aseptically place the sponge back into the bag. Aseptically remove and discard your gloves. Fold the bag to close, remembering to not touch the opening or inside of the bag. Fold the ends of the blue wires inward. Label and take a picture of the sampling site. Now we will cover sponge sticks. Label the sample bag with a permanent marker for identification. Tear the bag open. Move the stick to the end of the bag. Aseptically grab the stick above the thumb stop line to remove the sponge. Don't put your hand inside the bag or touch past the thumb stop line. Aseptically swab across the entire sampling surface. Make sure to apply sufficient pressure. Aim to use both sides of the sponge surface. Turn the sponge stick over and sample the same site one last time, swabbing in a new direction. Aseptically place the sponge into the bag up to the thumb stop and hold the sponge in place inside the bag. Don't put the stick inside the bag. Bend the stick in a back and forth motion to break it off from the sponge. Allow the sponge to drop in the bag and discard the stick. Fold the bag to close, remembering to not touch the opening or inside of the sample bag. 
fold the ends of the blue wires inward. Label and take a picture of the sampling site. Now we will cover swabs. Swabs may be more convenient for harder to reach areas. Label each swab using a permanent marker. Bend the red snap valve at a 45 degree angle until you hear the valve break. This allows the lethene broth to fill into the tube end and wet the swab bulb. Squeeze the bulb of the swab to transfer all the lethene broth to the tube end of the swab. Twist and pull apart the bulb end of the swab from the tube end of the swab that contains the lethene broth. Rub the swab slowly and thoroughly over the desired surface area. Rub the swab three times over the surface, reversing directions between alternating strokes. Use firm pressure. The swab stick should bend slightly when you are doing it correctly. After sampling is complete, securely insert the swab back into the tube and transport to the lab for testing. Now we will talk about sampling site size during outbreak investigations. Guidelines usually dictate the size of the site you will sample during regular inspections. You might remember a minimum sampling area of 12 inches by 12 inches for sponges and 4 inches by 4 inches for swabs. This is not how you sample during an investigation. You are not going for a square-shaped sample surface. You are aiming to find sites where bacteria may survive cleaning and sanitation. Refer to our site selection video for more information. Next, we'll discuss how to properly document sampling sites. Sampling sites need to be properly documented to ensure that if it yields a positive result, this proper site can be identified and managed. For this, you need to take good photographs of the sampling sites and use correct terminology to label the sites. This is especially helpful when you have to go back and communicate with the facility about sampling results. Pictures of sampling sites should be close up and far away to get the context of where the site is in the facility. To label using the correct terminology, it may be necessary to ask the facility for a labeled map or an accompanying employee to receive proper identification of the sites. Finally, we will talk about cleaning and sanitation after sampling. Most sampling sponges and swabs are hydrated with DE neutralizing buffer. This buffer neutralizes the sanitizer before it kills the bacteria that you may recover during sampling. The buffer that is left behind after swabbing will allow bacteria to grow. You should communicate to the facility that they should perform the cleaning and sanitation procedures in the sites that were sampled. You are now all caught up with the basics of swabbing.